I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the podcaster who never stops talking. I am Darkwing Duck. And you, good citizens, are listening to the St. Canard Files, a podcast all about me. <laughs> you lucky dogs. Uh, what are the royalties on something like this anyway? All right, Darkwing. I'm I'm sorry though. You're not. You don't get any royalties for this. We don't even get paid. So you know, sorry, guy. But um, anyway, welcome to the Saint Canard Files, a Darkwing Duck podcast. I'm your host, Mike Russo, and Tiffany Silver Braun. Hey, Tiff. <laughs> and we are not alone. Joining us as our special guest is our good friend Will Santana. Welcome back to the podcast, buddy. It's playtime. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why you're here today. Oh, man, nobody could figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on, y'all? Y'all doing all right? Yeah, I'm yep. fine. How about you, Tiff? I'm in Tahoe on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Loving your Darkwing pin over there. Yeah. And Morgana yeah. and Scrooge. <laughs> yeah, for anybody who's listening on Spotify or a podcast app, you can head over to YouTube and watch us on that. Um, we, we have video this week of all three of us. So if you want to see us talk, you can do that. That'd be cool. Yeah, we know we know Tiff will be the highlight of it. She's the pretty one, so we know. <laughs> Aw, shucks. Oh, come on, Will. You're sexy and you know it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're in a good we're in a good mood today. We're all together and we're reviewing uh, you know, the annual, the Darkwing Duck annual from March of 2011 starring Quacker Jack. I mean, there's no other way to put it. He's the star of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, but before we get started with that, um, Will's been really busy. Uh, tell us what you've been up to. Oh, you know, just been busy uh, at working as a booking agent, um, booking them at cons, booking them at a comic book store, autograph signing with Funko stores, you know, if they have Funko Pops and ex expanding my brand any way I can. Um, I'm now currently at six clients. And by the end of this weekend, I might be at eight. Might. Are you at the liberty of telling us who your clients are? Yes, I can tell you the six. Um, we got Cricket Lee. Uh, she voiced, I believe the character is Mai or May on Avatar The Last Airbender. Jenny Kwan, uh, Olivia Hack, Greg Chun, uh, Gary Anthony Sturgis, and I'm missing one. I don't know. Oh my God, I'm going to get in trouble for that. They're listening to this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But we also know that, um, you know, your new job has brought you into contact with a few of uh, the Darkwing voice actors and given you the ability to record some intros for this, the podcast, too. Oh, yeah, man. Shout out to my boy V for hooking that up, man. V's an agent that worked for CTB, Celebrity Talent Booking, which is also where Jim and Raw Polson are under. So shout out to V. He so, threw me a man, bone. <laughs> so the episode just started off with Darkwing. Mm -hmm. um, we have one more from Jim coming up, but we're not going to tell you who it is. <laughs> and he mentioned Rob. So you might have an idea who's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. But again, we're not going to tell you. We're going to surprise you next week with that one. Right. But thank you, Will. It was an honor to write the dialogue for these amazing voice actors. <laughs> but I got to give you the credit for getting this done in the first place. Hey, it was an honor to stand next to him with my cell phone and record it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so shout uh, out to V, man, for throwing me that bone. And trust me, I threw him one back. He's loving the bone I threw at him. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Um, be before we continue, um, I got the Rescue Rangers Blu-ray Blu -ray last week. Oh, the, the Blu-ray, um, right? Yeah, it's all right. The episodes are crazy out of order, mm. um, but they're complete and they're, um, they're full screen. That's good to know. So I recommend the purchase. Um, it's not perfect by any means. I really wish the, um, that those opening scene, opening the, the theme song wasn't so refilmed and everything. But it looks good. It looks it looks beautiful. So I definitely recommend it. Unfortunately, Amazon's back ordered by like two months now. Oh wow! So you know you could put your order in, but you might not get it till April. But I got that. So I kind of maybe we'll get Darkwing on Blu-ray then. It's kind of a good sign. Hopefully, I think Dovetails will probably come first, right? 
you know what if anything does it might be ducktales or even mm-hmm. gargoyles but i think darkwing will come sooner or later well if, uh, if the reboot is real then i don't see why darkwing would, uh, wouldn't come out <laughs> yeah it'll come out eventually i think this mm-hmm. rescue rangers thing came out for that disney plus thing that we've already discussed mm-hmm. but when the darkwing <laughs> reboot comes out when it does come out we'll get something i'm sure yeah but um so the annual let's start talking about it guys all right, let's get into it. Let's talk about my my boy, man, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have three covers this th- with this issue. Um, two of them are pretty similar. Tiffany, would you like to talk about the two covers, um, A and A and B? Yeah, the A cover is um, obviously a parody of the Killing Joke, but with which Quacker we can Jack- hold up since we're on video <laughs> <laughs> with Quacker Jack instead of um, the Joker holding a camera with um, Darkwing in the lens. <laughs> so does the, on the Joker one, does it have Batman on the lens? Mm, I don't think so. I think okay. it's just the lens. Okay. I think that's and, just to be silly. <laughs> and cover B. <laughs> yeah, cover B, I'm not exactly sure. It's like in the same style as um, cover A though. And it's of Darkwing holding the gas gun and there's smoke surrounding him. And both done by Sylvan. And there is a cover C. Cover C is one of those crazy kind of, if you ever saw the highlights magazines as a kid, there's always that like find what's wrong with this image kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's got Darkwing, Goslin, Launchpad, and the Fearsome Five, but they're all drawn incorrectly. So I guess the idea is to find everything that's wrong. Like for example, Liquidator has a Nautilus and a squid inside of his body. Bushroot's made of money. Uh, Goslin has gadgets, crossbow. uh, Darkwing's wearing um, tidy whities (laughs) <laughs> it's, and Negaduck has like eyes on his hat kind of like one of the alien hats um, it's an incredibly expensive variant I checked on Amazon there's a copy there for 400 bucks mm. so good luck with that you might as well just buy the definitively dangerous for that kind of money oh yeah and um, speaking of which there's a lot of dialogue differences in the main story of this of the annual um, but we'll get there you might as well start this, the annual's got two stories. The first one is the main story. Uh, it's called Toy With Me. And who's its star, Well, Oh, the one and only Quacker Jack, man. Come on now. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's written by um, Ian Brill. And this, we, this issue, most of the story is not done by James Salvani. Tiffany, who does the art for Toy With Me? Uh, Sabrina, your favorite. <laughs> I love her work. It is absolutely gorgeous. I really wish they would have done more with her. As great as Silvani's stuff is, Sabrina's art looks like it walked right out of the cartoon. Like she clearly, she clearly loves the show. And I know I've said it many times before, her Darkwing looks right out of the Disney Australia dark episodes. Mm -hmm. And Quacker Jack is amazing. I don't think he's ever looked this good even on the show. Oh yeah, all the Quacker Jack art is great. There, there's it, one frame I, I I love on this story, Tiff and Mike. Uh, it's a frame where Cracker Jack is like in his office, and it looks like a three three sixty degree uh, shot. Yes, you know, I know what you're talking about. Oh, I love that one. But he's man. ranting and screaming and banging on the table. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. that one. <laughs> and there's drawing of drawings of Darkwing, which I swear came right from specific shots from different episodes. Like some really like great stuff. The mm-hmm. one of Cracker Jack. There's one that's like from the show too. Mm-hmm. Sure. from his first episode i think yeah i know i said way back when we reviewed with a while you work but the animation in his first appearance has definitely inspired lots of artists a lot of people draw him that same way so it's definitely true um and she doesn't go crazy adding lots of references like there are no visual references in the background that's really a james silvani thing but i think because of that the drawings are a lot truer to the show mm-hmm it's, it's really some great stuff. I, th- I love the art. I wish you had done more. So why don't we start with the, um, the storyline? Um, Will, why don't you start talking about what happens in Toy With Me? Okay. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. Was it a- Aloysius? Aloysius. Aloysius. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was Aloysius. 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 <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. Okay. <laughs> Aloysius. Oh man. So basically we start off and we see like a, a room like of all old school stuff that we saw of Quacker Jack. We see uh Wiffle Boy, we see trophies, we see medals, arcades, 
all kind of stuff, gaming uh, stuff. There's a doll of one of the weasel kids from Whiffle While You Work, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're just referencing to the good old days of 16-bit. But uh, was yeah, 16-bit was out back then because 8-bit was the NES era and the 16-bit was the Sega Genesis. And well, Super when Darkwing Nintendo. Duck was brand new, the Super Nintendo had just come out. Yeah. So And the Genesis had been out for like a year or so before that. So this is, it's mm-hmm. definitely, the references are correct. Mm-hmm. So what's going on, Well, uh, Basically, uh, Cracker Jack is talking to Aloysius. Uh, and uh, Aloysius is like, you know, uh, he's asking Cracker Jack what his name is. And he just says, I, I go by Jack. And they, they build up to him. You see him from the side. You don't know it's Quacker yeah. Jack at first. But yeah, at first soon you, you don't... see that smile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he's pulled out the molecular digitizer from Whiffle While You Work. And we all know what that thing does. Mm-hmm. What happens next, Tiffany? Um, then he, uh, dem- he's talking about how it worked and then Quacker Jack pushes him down, uses it on him and it turns him into a toy instead of, um, turning him into a video game. All right. So there we go. Quacker Jack is, is, uh, he has a plan here. We're going to find out what it is soon, yeah. but, um, but so Quacker Jack leaves, he puts the doll of, um, Mendelbaum. Aloysius Mendelbaum on the table and leaves laughing. And then we cut to Darkwing's hideout where Darkwing and Launchpad are studying the doll and Darkwing is certain Mendelbaum hasn't disappeared. He is the toy. Mm-hmm. And there is some discussion about how hardcore Quacker Jack has gotten, which is unique to the, um, the, the annual. It's not in the definitively dangerous because he mentions how cruel he was to Megavolt, yeah. which isn't yeah. definitively dangerous. They remove that. But here's the problem. Darkwing doesn't know the name of Mr. Banana Brain. Yeah. He, he's certain <laughs> that Quacker Jack is like this because he lost Banana Brain. And, the, and Banana Brain's own, and Quacker Jack's only friend was that doll. But they don't remember what it's called. So they have to go to the supermarket to buy all the fruit and they're going to book <laughs> on human anatomy. <laughs> so they can figure out what this doll is called oh man that's too funny and uh there's a line from launchpad that's only in definitively dangerous where launchpad mentions um toys have a good time they go to pizzerias and they have a lot of fun uh what movie is the launchpad referencing there you guys know right uh-uh. a bunch of dolls go into a pizzeria oh toy story yeah oh okay <laughs> So I didn't what pick ha- up on that at first. <laughs> <laughs> so while Darkwing and Launchpad are going through all the fruit they bought with uh, $56.38 <laughs> of grocery bills, uh, we cut to the, um, the Wiffle Boy Entertainment Company. Will, what happens next? Uh, we got two programmers or developers. Uh, they're discussing the game. Um, now, I, Mike, I got to ask you this. On the Boom one, they mentioned it as the world of Wifflecraft several times. Right. But on Definitely Dangerous, I think it was only brought up once. Why do you? They think don't they... mention it. They don't mention it nearly as much for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But, but you're right. It doesn't. It isn't mentioned as much. Yeah. <laughs> so they bring in this big, big crate that says "To Wiffle Boy Entertainment" from Admirer. <laughs> but then suddenly the front breaks open, and obviously, who is it? Will? Oh man, it's Quacker Jack. It's playtime. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> He uses the molecular digitizer to turn a bunch more people in the dolls. Mm-hmm. He gets up on the digitizer and he says it. He says, I do believe it's playtime. <laughs> it's a great I shot love- of him too. It's a great shot. The art yeah. in this comic is so gorgeous. I love it. Mm-hmm. But Darkwing and Launchpad is still trying to figure out what the doll is called. <laughs> and so a couple of kids get a brief cameo in this comic. So Tiffany, tell us what happens next. So Goslin just knows what it is and was watching them struggle, trying to figure out what his name was. Honker <laughs> finds one on eBay um, or a type of eBay and they're trying to bid for it online and they're being outbid by, what was the name? Uh, this, well, the seller uh, is somebody uh, named Sparky99. Oh, the seller Sparky. <laughs> 
And Darkwing doesn't realize who that is either. He goes, yeah. all right, Sparky99, whoever you are. Which Come is on, hilarious. Man. That's a dead giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> but he's in a bidding war. And he pushes Honker out of the way, like is all angry, is thinks that he can do it better than Honker and he loses. And he's placing <laughs> bids of like a few cents. Yeah. <laughs> so of course he loses. <laughs> and he doesn't win. And Honker, luckily, he totally, totally validates his inclusion in the story by finding out who bought the doll. Yeah. Yeah, so. well, okay, that panel, is that supposed to be like an inappropriate joke? Which one? <laughs> where it's um, at the bottom of that page where they're bidding. And then he says, I did some, I did some uh, research into the competition. And he's like tilting his head. Is that like supposed to be like <laughs> an inappropriate joke? I don't know, maybe, but not as inappropriate as lying down and taking it. <laughs> um, but that Darkwing drawing is directly from comic book capers mm. when, Super, when Super Bunny shows up. Yes. And he Super says, Since when do I have a faithful pet named Super Bunny? That's yeah. the exact same drawing right there. Mm -hmm. So I love um, Honker's expression there too. All the expressions are fantastic. I wish Goslin and Honker had been in this longer. So we cut back to the Wiffle Boy Entertainment Company. And Will, what is Quacker Jack doing? What's his plan? He, he spills it pretty much. Yeah, he's going to turn everybody who's playing the game into dolls. Because um, basically, they're basically parodying World, World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Which Anybody ever play that? I did a little it. bit a long time ago. And I, it is really fun. I remember like the Simpsons parodied it. South Park definitely did. Yeah. So it was and, uh, big American for a while. Dad. <laughs> American Dad did too. Yeah, those were all great episodes. So uh, Quacker Jack is like, you know, bring me the servers. And, you know, he plans to turn everyone playing the game into dolls. Mm -hmm. So Darkwing has found the address. And he tells Launchpad to stay in the rat catcher while he goes to, you know, check it out what's going on. He My favorite... Pumpkin. He got pumpkin. What, 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 oh yeah, Launchpad got pumpkin. Launch, Launchpad got pumpkin. <laughs> Until this is my favorite gag in the whole story. The, a girl opens the door, is happy to see Darkwing, and is like, "Hey, a celebrity. Would you like some cake?" And then Darkwing <laughs> goes, "Come on, Launchpad. They have cake." <laughs> and Launchpad's like, "Oh boy." <laughs> and the next shot, the next drawing, they're sitting there eating cake. <laughs> <laughs> that's my yeah. favorite gag in the whole oh, comic yeah. <laughs> so this girl claire tiffany who is quacker jack in relation to claire so she was dating quacker jack and met him at quackworks when they everyone was working there quacker and, jack uh, with a girlfriend yeah mm. <laughs> And not, she keeps calling him Jack and Jackie the whole time too. Jackie, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not really a fan. What do you? How that. do you feel about Quacker Jeff ha having a girlfriend? Will? Um, uh, it's a little weird, but I'm actually okay with it. I know you don't. I'm, I'm kind of spoiling here, Mike. I, I know you're not a fan of her in the story, but I actually like her in the story because it, it gives it softens up uh, the story right. a little bit. I I think it's I think the story is supposed to soften Quacker Jack a bit. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I get it. So she goes into this big exposition dump about what happened to Quacker Jack when he was at Quackworks. Mm -hmm. um, Will, what did happen to him since you're his biggest fan? Tell he our was, listeners. He was basically, he was at a place. Like he felt like he didn't fit in. People were getting promoted over him. Uh, he, he, was, he had all the toys in the background and stuff where everybody else was kind of like having the, the notes and the, the books and all that kind of stuff for work. He just he didn't was fit in. He was happy at first, mm -hmm. but he wouldn't schmooze with upper management. And he's he's mad that every everyone gets promoted because they kiss up to management, and not him because he just cares about the toys. Yep. Which you know his heart's in the right place, but you know how Quacker Jack is when he gets you know when when he gets pushed too far. Mm -hmm. And um, Claire says that he just snapped. Everyone got promoted. Everyone you know got better jobs and. He saw everybody else as being idiots and he just couldn't take it anymore. And he snapped. So Claire gets a delivery, Tiffany. What shows up at her door? The Mr. Banana Brain. 
He's all stitched together because you never know yep. what happened. Negaduck tore him apart. Yeah, <laughs> and... <it's> sad, <laughs> harsh. And then Launchpad gets a um, call from Goslin about someone's in the Wiffle Boy, you know, headquarters, and is making serious demands. Yep. So then, you know, Darkwing's like, you know, he's he's hard on Quacker Jack because, of course, Darkwing is. Oh, of course, yeah. They got beef. <laughs> but what does Claire? What does Claire say? She she's basically saying like you just don't understand him. You know, uh, she kind of feels like he he has that softer side that nobody's understanding, and like, uh, but she's very protective of him, definitely. I love that drawing of Darkwing when she's got him by the cape and she's pulling on him, and his mm-hmm. face just says, "Are you for real, lady?" <laughs> <laughs> But uh, he he talks her into giving him banana brain. And she says, you know, save the world, Darkwing. And this is a big change. In the original annual, he says, I'll do better than that. I'll save a man, which is very not Darkwing. Mm -hmm. In Definitively Dangerous, he says, I'll save the world and Quacker Jack. Which that's way better. (laughs) That sounds a lot more like him. Mm -hmm. And he pumpkins launch pad again when he gets into the a rat catcher <laughs> he tells him you know when we get there it's a solo job so launchpad definitely got pumpkins thank you jim peterson for that term yeah we learned that term <laughs> when we interviewed on the launch pad uh pumpkin launch pad <laughs> did you did you did you hear that episode tiffany no because <laughs> in beauty and the beat they put a pumpkin on launch pad's head so he can be pushed out of the final fight and no. since then the writers called it putting a pumpkin on launch pad so that yeah. trying to find ways That's to get awesome. out of the story. How did I miss that episode? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So every every time like you see Launchpad uh just like kind of get put put out of the story somehow, it basically they said we get we had a pumpkin him. <laughs> like in Malice's restaurant where they split up and Launchpad goes to the wrong yeah. studio. Yeah. That's pumpkin and launchpad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tiffany, what happens next? We cut back to the um the building, the entertainment building, and what's going on? So Quacker Jack's explaining his plan and um, Darkwing bursts in through the ceiling, um, Batman style. He, <laughs> says, <laughs> Batman style. <laughs> he says, I never did that before. Now I know why. <laughs> yeah. But we all know the series really well. He's jumped through glass before, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like he must have. Oh, he did when he jumped into the bowling alley to fight Steel Beak and Tiff of the Titans. Mm. So he has done it. He gets an entrance um, in the annual is I am the noob that spam chats villainy. Mm-hmm. Do you happen to know what he says in Definitively Dangerous, Will? I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't remember either. I don't think it's as good as this one, though. The I noob can... that spam chats villainy. <laughs> I can look it up real quick, though. Go for it. Yeah, I can look it up real quick. Why, uh, let's see. Where is it at? Here we go. It says, um, I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the ungeared noob that gets your entire raid wiped. Okay, so similar sentiment. I think the annual is funnier, though. But then he comes back with Banana Brain. And this drawing of Quacker Jack when he says, Mr. Banana Brain, you're all better, is so great. (laughs) (laughs) So what happens next, Will? Uh, Basically, we get the battle of the Banana Brains now. Uh, you know, Darkwing lets him know who he has in hand, and then uh, they the, both of the banana brains get zapped, right? Yeah, we didn't mention yet that Quacker Jack has a new banana brain that it's like hardcore, like this is like metal, not like Mecha <laughs> banana brain from the original story. This one's got like a pointed feet, a pointed nose. He's this and like the, sharp banana brain. The sharp <laughs> banana brain, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got like the Freddy Krueger claws a little bit too. <laughs> So Darkwing tries to trick Quacker Jack into giving himself up. Quacker Jack won't come easily. Six, the toy versions of the employees on Darkwing who pin him down. But the, 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 the wires of the molecular digitizer falls on the two banana brains, uh, zaps them, and they become these giant like 20 foot banana brains. And they're like alive, <laughs> which I like this. This is pretty funny. I just, I don't know why, Mike, but when I read this part, 
I, I Phil Hartman's voice was in my head for the the OG Banana Brain. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know so, why. So, so what it's would the new one to sound like? Out what his voice would sound like because it's like, is it Phil Hartman or is it Quacker Jack doing the Banana Brain? Voice? <laughs> That's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> but the two banana brains start fighting over Quacker Jack like he's a toy. Mm -hmm. And they're stretching him out. <laughs> and then Darkwing zaps them with the molecular digitizer, which knocks Quacker Jack through a window, which seems a little, little hardcore. Mm -hmm. And they shrink back into the doll size. And when Darkwing gets outside, Quacker Jack's gone. So let's wrap and this up. Like, and he's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> 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 so the last page of this story as it's interesting like launchpad asks darkwing if you catch up with quackerjack what would you say to him and what does what does he say tiffany you can paraphrase it uh wait what does darkwing say darkwing says if you caught up to quackerjack he would say this to him like he would say you know i've been thinking about that one really hard I don't even know how to paraphrase this because I'm I know. not like a fan of it. <laughs> it's, it definitely reads, but I mean, I asked you mainly because it is tough to explain. Like yeah. this is very not Darkwing to talk totally. about how he would talk to one of his old villains. Like he's definitely like empathizing with Cracker Jack in this, in this dialogue, which doesn't seem very much like him. And it see it, the whole thing seems weird because it's like, this is someone that he fights constantly. It's not like a one shot where it's like, what would you say if you ever found that guy again or anything? It's like, this is someone. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to read what Darkwing says in the annual, at least. He says, I'd say you've always wanted your brand to be the biggest and best. Okay, I get that. Believe me, more than you think I do. But when you only use a mallet to solve your problems, all you see are nails. You become a toy to your own anger. That sort of thinking can't continue. Not when there are people out like her out there thinking about you. I don't hear Darkwing saying that at all. <laughs> On Definitely Danger, it's completely different. They do change it a bit. I mean, they, mm -hmm. I mean, he has dialogue, but they do change it. So what does Quacker Jack do at the very, very end, Will? Man, he shoots himself, <laughs> with, man, and he turns into a doll. <laughs> and he leaves, he leaves a note with you the doll version. so harsh. <laughs> yeah, he leaves himself. <laughs> on Claire's doorstep with a note saying, what's it say, Tiffany? This, this is the best I'll ever be. <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> and it says, an ending. <laughs> and it says, an ending, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and this is why we don't see Quacker Jack again. Yeah, bleh. This is why he's not in jail in the Joe Books version. This is why we never see him again. Because they, they, they wrote themselves in their corner with him and now we're not gonna see him anymore. Yeah. I, I I know Will likes this more than we do, but I'm just not a fan of the story. No. The art <laughs> saves it. The art is amazing. It really, really is. But I remember the story getting a lot of hate when this issue first came out. A lot of people didn't like it. Because what it is, it's Ian Brill's writing not filtered through James Silvani in any way. Mm-hmm. And now we see what Ian Brell's writing is like when no one's able to ghostwrite for him. And I don't, I don't like it. But you know, we'll rate it at the end of this episode because the annual ends with a short story by Tad Stones mm -hmm. and drawn by James Silvani. It's called The Untimely Terror of the Time Turtle starring Darkwing and Goslin and a new villain. We can do this one pretty quick, I think. Um, oh, yeah. What happens in the story, Will? Uh, they're basically, they're at a pet store and, you know, Goslin wants like all the the vicious pets. She ain't playing around. She wants snakes and eagles <laughs> or whatever, you know, uh, dinosaurs, uh, tarantulas. She wants all that kind of stuff. But and dark wings, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he wants her to get something fuzzy. <laughs> or, or something. Or like the mold. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, this is so darkwing and Goslin. Mm -hmm. and which makes total sense i can hear their voices and everything they say here which makes sense because it's tad writing this like mm -hmm. it's it's terrific like drake would say get a slime mold collection yeah that is totally drake <laughs> we get a, a cute joke of him telling goslin to find something soft and fuzzy and she looks in a cage and there's a little duck yeah. 
with hair just like her. And she's creeped out. <laughs> <laughs> so really, really quick, since it's James Silvani, we have a ton of Disney references in this pet store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll just name them quick so we're not here all day like in the last issue, Tiffany. Um, yeah. We get some sharks from Finding Nemo. We get Flotsam and Jetsam from Little Mermaid. Joanna the Iguana from Rescuers Down Under. A few bugs from James and the Giant Peach. There's Sir Hiss from uh, Robin Hood. There's Thumper. There's Flower, both from Bambi. Gurgi from The Black Cauldron <laughs> of all characters. <laughs> Timothy Mouse from Dumbo. Uh, Bjorn and Benonker from The Rescuers. Um, Gil and Nemo from Finding Nemo. Crush from Finding Nemo. Um, I th- oh, and Lucifer from Cinderella. Scat Cat from the Aristocats. And the Siamese Cats from Lady and the Tramp. Did I miss any? I the think all, that's all. The oh, only one I can fish. think of. Oh, go ahead, Tiff. Maybe those are the fish from Fantasia because they have those super long tails. Oh, possibly. There is a snake in the first panel that could be Ka from the Jungle Book, but he's colored mm-hmm. red. Oh, and the Tiki Room birds. I was going to ask you, um, on, I think it's on the first page where Sir Hiss is. There looks like a red dragon right behind Drake. Is that Mushu? It could oh, be yeah. Mushu, yeah. Okay. I was wondering that too. Yeah, I couldn't tell though because I was like, this Mushu looks a little more scarier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe he's trying to impress somebody. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> they find a turtle. Darkwing is like, you know, why don't you have to get this turtle? It has built an armor. And this big guy <laughs> shows up and asks them to hand it over. And then Goslin looks at the turtle's stomach and what's written on it? Pack the Says. bungee. <laughs> Which is extremely cryptic. She has no idea what that means. And then she kind of disintegrates and moves forward in time. And I love where... how she's like, thinks it's cool instead of is freaked, <laughs> instead of being freaked out by it. <laughs> That's totally Goslin, though. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so Darkwing is fighting a villain named Chrono Duck in a clock tower. Chrono Duck has a head that's a clock. <laughs> And he's a new he's a new villain. He's he okay. Remind me of the Clock King. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. So Darkwing <laughs> jumps at him. Uh, Chrono Duck disappears, and Darkwing falls to his death. And then Goslin goes back in time again, back to the pet store. Mm-hmm. So what happens next, Will? Uh, the guy takes the turtle from her, uh, and then she no he he. He announces uh, that he's Chrono Duck. I am the mastery of time and clockery. And he's already mentioned that uh, Darkwing's already failed to stop him. And the turtle is slow enough to crawl between the seconds mm-hmm. into the chronoplasm of time. So it's the turtle that allows them to move around in time. So Darkwing and Goslin go to chase Chrono Duck. And Goslin's like, you can't chase him. It's too dangerous because she saw Darkwing die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what happens next, Tiffany? He's like, you know what my catchphrase is, right? <laughs> Can't you just be undangerous just this once? <laughs> he goes back to the, t- he goes to the tower. He, and then they have an identical page, which I really like, um, but with different, slightly different dialogue. And this time um, when Darkwing falls, what does Goslin do? She uses a bungee cord on him as he falls. She and- says, I hope I understood the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and then the um wait, what's his name chrono duck he's he looks at the turtle and it, it says sprawling on its stomach now and <laughs> that doesn't make any sense <laughs> but then darkwing sprawings back up and beats him mm-hmm. and um, if you look really quick in the second to last panel you will see um basil dr dawson and radigan from the great mouse detective Oh, hiding in the them. gears yeah because that's them. where the great mouse detective ends that's the climax yep. the clock tower <laughs> that's one of my favorite references because it's like totally accurate <laughs> and will how does the story end what happens in the very last panel basically we see all the notes and stuff that goslin was leaving bes- be- behind for her to, in order to save Darkwing. He's trying to figure out how exactly this time travel thing happened. Mm-hmm. He's mostly confused because he died in one reality. Like, he's like, does that mean there's a me that's dead? <laughs> <laughs> like Rick and Morty style. <laughs> it's definitely Rick and Morty style. And Goslin's like, can't help you, dad. It's time to walk the fungus. 
<laughs> <laughs> I wish this story was longer. I really do. Cause it's very, very fun. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't seen the last of Chrono Duck, but do you guys want to rate him? Sure, we can. Mm. We can. We can rate him. I mean, not, there's not much to go off yet because yeah. it was so short. But for his brief appearance, I, I, I would personally give him a three and a half because the potential was there. You know, with the time I, traveling and stuff. This would be a good villain for the show. Mm-hmm. A time traveling yeah. villain. Like, yeah, that's I, cool. I like it, and they have all the time machines too, so mm. <laughs> it works. Um, does uh, anybody have any idea what Chrono Duck would have sounded like? Hmm, like the Clock King? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he would sound a bit like Kelsey Grammer or Sideshow Bob, oh, like yeah, very I refined. Could hear that for sure, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> or like a David Ogden Steers kind of character, like Cogsworth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the clock thing, so I'm just immediately <laughs> go right to him. But um, I, you know, I'll, I'll give him a three because I really think he had potential. Mm-hmm. He does come back in Joe books, but they don't do much with him. But I think he's cool enough for the short story. How about you, Tiff? Same, three and a half. <laughs> so should we re- rate the two stories separately or rate the entire comic as a whole? Mm. I don't know. I vote, I vote separately. I, I vote I, separately too. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, Will, as our guest, which seems really weird to say, um, <laughs> how would you rate Toy With Me? <sighs> okay. <laughs> I personally, I'm, I'm going to rate it on <laughs> Definitely Dangerous because Definitely Dangerous, the, the dialogue fits the characters a it's lot better. better. I agree. It's way better. So I'm going to go off of that one. And it's Quacker Jack and Banana Brain. The Banana Brain duel, man. Come on, man. Um, I, Y'all going to go. Y'all, I know y'all going to go way off for me on this one. I'm going to go four and a half. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tiffany, you want to do your rating next? I think <laughs> Will's going to hate me. <laughs> no! <laughs> I think I'm going to do a three and a half, which is my lowest one so far. Okay. Thoughts? Um, I, I do really like the art. There's some story stuff. I just think there's way, I think this is the most like out of character it's ever been. It's been so mm-hmm. far. Um. Yeah, I really don't like the girlfriend thing. I do like Cracker Jack's backstory, talking about him being like a disgruntled employee. I think all of that is great and seeing more of that. I like the banana brain fight, but I don't know. Just the girlfriend thing is weird. I don't see like Quacker Jack that way or Megavolt. No. I could see Bushroot with a girlfriend, obviously. And oh Liquid yeah. Fruit. And even Mega Duck, I could see with a girlfriend, but not and we know and we know Steelbeak loves the ladies. Yeah, <laughs> it's just Quagger Jack and Megavolt. They can't have girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> no, Weird. they're not. They're not stable enough for stable relationships. <laughs> yeah, unless there's like I, a sto- unless there's like a Stockholm is. syndrome thing going on. They're with way the girl. too. They're way too unhinged. Although I would say it really. I don't know if you guys watched the Harley Quinn show. I no, saw the first I two seasons. Is are, have they done season three yet? Mm, I actually don't remember what season there was. I watched all of it that's on um, HBO, but mm-hmm. there's a storyline with the Joker. I don't want to say. Oh, you don't want to spoil you... it? I've seen, I've I seen it. spoil it. You've seen it? So you <laughs> yeah, know what I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really similar to this. I mean, the Joker has <laughs> always dated Harley Quinn, but that was never anything but a toxic relationship. No, not that. There's like another storyline oh, about I- him. Oh, I, yeah. Else, and it's very similar. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's not impossible for Quacker Jack to have a girlfriend, but that girlfriend would have to be seriously unhinged, just like him. Yeah. This girl Claire seems too know, normal. Totally, it's weird. I don't like it, and I don't like yeah that line that I mean. I guess they changed it in definite, in definitively dangerous for that line of like I'll, I'll save a man is like weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but maybe if she was a bit of a nut job herself, I would totally buy it. Yeah. yeah, but she seems she too some, like normal. Even if she was like that kind of crazy housewife, like I have a collection of ceramic clowns, and it's like, okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> or like, just just give her the just give her the two, uh, the two pigtails like Harley Quinn, just as a little <laughs> little visual, like okay, this is who this character is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I yeah. would say, okay, I get it, I totally get it. But she's just so like simple. There's like nothing to her. 
Um, anyway, my rating is actually "Don't Kill Me Well" is lower than Tiffany's. Oh my god! Man. But it's still it's still not bad. I'm giving it a three. Um, a lot of that though is on the strength of the art. I think if this had been just drawn by Silvani, I mean, as much as good as his art is, I probably would like it less. But the Albergetti art is so amazing and so true to the show. Like I get lost in it and it really, really helps. Some of the jokes are fine, but Darping's out of character. I can't picture Quacker Jack having a girlfriend. Honestly, I can even picture him having a job. Like I think he's, I think he's, too, I think he's too crazy to have a job in the first place. Like the idea of him like doing well at the beginning and having friends around the office doesn't work for me if he even make fun of Megavolt and Megavolt's his closest friend. I can't yeah. imagine anyone wanting to be around him for that long. And I just, I just don't see it. The idea of the villains working for a Quackworks might have worked for Megavolt. I just don't see it for Quackerjack. Honestly, yeah. it's I don't think it's terrible. It's great that he got his own solo story. Like none of the other characters really got that except for him. So that's amazing. And I do appreciate that. But I can't go higher than the three. But since you two ripped it apart, let me give it the last word on it, man. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, basically, I like it. Quacker Jack, we see him actually with a whole new demeanor. We've never seen him this mean, you know, in an entire episode before. So I like that aspect of it. Uh, I like that Claire does soften him up a little bit. And then the ending with him, you know, you know, basically kind of committing suicide. You know, it kind of showed he had a heart. So that's how I looked at it. I'm sorry. And then the banana brain fight. Oh man, I just thought that was hilarious. That was Maybe. cool. I can't, yeah. I can't, that was cool. Maybe this might've worked if we knew a bit who Quacker Jack was before he became Quacker Jack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like I knew a bit about the kind of person he was. Like this would work with Bushroot because I know Bushroot's a good person. Same with Megavolt. But I don't know who Quacker Jack is deep down. The show never explained it. Mm -hmm. so this show is making things up as it goes this comic is making things up as it goes along which is fine but all i know about quacker jack from the show doesn't make me think he could pull this off that's yeah. why it doesn't work as much for me if it was bushroot absolutely absolutely but i never felt quacker jack wanted friends or companionship because he's he's really just a big kid yeah so anyway um I feel like that that whole like turning himself into a toy thing is fine and would have been cool if they like just didn't have the girlfriend part and didn't, if he didn't <laughs> do it in front of her door because like it's it would be like okay that's kind of a quacker jack thing he like is giving up and turning himself into a toy which is his thing but then it's like he yeah. did it and gave it to his girlfriend it's and, like, and saying no. this is the this is the best I'll ever be yeah, y'all really like, hate the no. girlfriend, man. <laughs> y'all really hate the girlfriend. If it was Bushroot, I'd have no problem with it. He needs a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, so many people love it though, so I get it. Like I see fan art all the time of like that relationship and that character. Like I know a lot of people love the storyline. Um, as for the time turtle story, um, I'll rate it first. I'm gonna give it a four. It would be higher if it was longer. Yes. But the dialogue is great. The story, what we get of it is great. The Silvani art is as good as always. It's Tad Stones, man. Like he, he created Darkwing. He wrote the story. But it's so freaking short. <laughs> I got to give it a four. I can't be any more generous than that. How about you guys? Um, I'm going to give it a four and a half. Whoa, I, that went way up there. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have... A problem with it being short I mean I do wish it was longer but I mean it's in an annual and oftentimes like annuals will have multiple stories that aren't long mm -hmm. so I mean it seems pretty regular to me so you like, were expecting no. it yeah I mean in an annual I expect stories to not be like you know there to be multiple stories and not that long um and yeah it's just it's funny it's yeah just it's exactly Darkwing. There's nothing mm -hmm. like odd in it. And I do like the villain and thought it was pretty clever. <laughs> I, I do want to point out, oh, let me let Will rate the uh, story first and okay. then I'll point out. Uh, I'm not going to give it a bad score. Uh, I'm going to go with a three and a half. 
Um, the only reason why it doesn't go, go as high as you guys, because I was like really getting my max interest. Like it was hitting the climax and then it just ended. I was like, no, That's I wanted true. more. I wanted more. <laughs> so for me, it was like a good filler story, but it was like, man, I just didn't get that completion that I wanted, you know? So I, I'll go I, three and a half. Okay. I don't know if you noticed, Will, in the Definitively Dangerous, all the new dialogue and toy with me. I feel like this is where Darkwing starts to use alliteration a lot. Did you notice that? He's always mm -hmm. like, and I feel like when we get to Joe Books, he's almost always talking in alliteration. Mm -hmm. And I, and that seems to be where, where it started, was definitively dangerous, where they have him talking all the time like that. <laughs> I don't remember him talking that often in alliteration in the show, even though he did, right, Tiffany? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't all the time. He'd maybe have like one little speech per episode. <laughs> but you'll see when we get into the Joe Book stuff, he's talking in alliteration constantly um <laughs> but i but it, it's just something i wanted to point out because i don't have definitively dangerous right in front of me right now um but i guess that's it does anybody have any final thoughts on uh, the annual um my thing is mike do you highly recommend definitely dangerous version over the yes the, the boom one because to me I, the dialogue fits the characters so much better on i recommend dangerous. definitively dangerous over everything else okay <laughs> everything else and not to rub it in, I just wish Tiffany had a copy of it. <laughs> sure, we'll get her one. We'll get we're her gonna one. Find, we're gonna, if, if I have to start photocop uh, taking photos of every page of it <laughs> so she has that reference, I'm going to start doing it. <laughs> By the time we get into the last two story arcs, it definitely helps a lot more. So hopefully we'll find you a copy. I really hope we do. Let's start like a crowdfunding thing. Get <laughs> Tiffany definitively dangerous. <laughs> well, she got dangerous currency now. Yes. Oh, yeah. enjoy reading that, Tiffany. <laughs> I, I wanted it for so long. <laughs> so I guess that's it for tonight, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so we are the St. Canard Files, a Darkwing Duck podcast. You can find us on all podcast apps, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, iTunes, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Pocket Cast, Radio Public. Facebook, and you can watch us on YouTube, as maybe you're doing right now. You can see our faces. And um, Will and Tiffany, is there anything you guys want to plug tonight before we go? I want to give a shout out to Tiff, man. Uh, I'm going to say <laughs> she's been a great co-host. You guys have great Aww. chemistry together. And um, uh, Tiff and Mike don't get to see the analytics like I do, but the numbers <laughs> are looking good on uh, Spotify nice. <laughs> and Apple and Stitcher. You guys are doing really good. I, love I really enjoy recording with you, Tiffany. I, I mean, even Aww. if we have to like drag you away from your vacation for an hour to do it, <laughs> I, uh, I really enjoy it. This is it's been a blast, and you know the and you know comics really well, so it's it's definitely been a really big help. I love it. Aw, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and Will, do you want to plug anything before you go? Any any conventions you'll be at soon? Um. I will be at a uh, pandemic dead tour next uh, month in Atlanta. I will also be in Huntsville in April and then Lexington in May, Lexington, Kentucky. Um, guys, uh, if you're listening, you know, uh, follow my, um, my company page, business page on Facebook, Chameleon Media Productions. Uh, also, I have a website on, it's chameleonmediaproductions.com. You can follow my clients there. Uh, I link all their stuff on there to INDB and, uh, those of you who follow also, if you're a fan of Jenny Kwan, she has something major uh, dropping this uh, summer. Major. Cool. <laughs> and are any Darkwing voice actors going to these conventions that yes. you know of? Uh, Rob Poulsen will be at Huntsville. Jim and uh, Rob will also be at that Pandemic Dead Tour. Uh, Lexington. Oh, Huntsville will also have Michael Bell. So, nice. Yeah, Quacker Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lexington, I don't think any of them were 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 dropped for that one yet. And um I there's a, there's actually a convention close to me in only two weeks. It's called 90s Con. Jim's gonna be there in Connecticut. Mm, right. So we're thinking about doing that one if we can make it. Okay. Oh, and kind of short in, kind of it, short notice. We just find out about it. So yeah, and if you're in Houston in August, I will be there uh, at Anime Houston with um, Michaela Jill Murphy, a.k.a. Jesse Flowers. She voiced Toph in uh, Avatar. I will be her agent for that one. And then um, on the uh, Black Friday weekend, I will be in Dallas with Jenny and Olivia. 
Ah, well, now we're getting really ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for Black Friday again. Let's get that. <laughs> so, uh, okay, guys, this has been fun. We'll have to do it again sometime. But until then, everybody have a great night and stay dangerous. Stay dangerous, everyone. See you, Tim. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>